When you think about innovation, what do you think about? If you're like me and you were born and raised in Silicon Valley, then you probably think about technology. And technology has impacted our lives in so many different ways. As you've seen from the last talk, it can make our lives easier. It can open up opportunities that we never knew existed. But sometimes, I think we grow too reliant on technology. I think that sometimes we all need to be reminded that solving a problem through computers is not the only way to solve it. And for this, I'd like to introduce you to the world of cryptography. Cryptography is the art and science of making and breaking codes, and I find it fascinating. The kind of cryptography that you and I use every day probably slips your mind. When's the last time that you logged on to a wireless network, or checked your email, or even changed your password? All of these things require cryptography, and this cryptography is the type that you don't even think about because it occurs automatically within your computer. But that's not always how it was. Before World War II, most cryptography was handwritten, and it looked something like this. It was a jumble of letters, and mathematicians and codebreakers had to come together to try to figure out what these letters meant. So this cipher is actually pretty simple. It's called the Caesar Shift Cipher. And every letter has been shifted one space forward in the alphabet. So A has been shifted to B, B has been shifted to C, and so on. So in order to break this, all we need to do is shift the letters back one and we'll get the answer. I packed an apple and some cheese for lunch. Accurate. So the kind of cryptography that you and I see today doesn't look anything like this. In fact, it looks more like this. Indecipherable binary code that our computers used to encrypt and decrypt our information without us knowing. Now, this is a much more secure type of cryptography because we don't have to think about it, but it can still generate trillions of different key combinations and make it so that breaking our codes is much harder. But it's not impossible. That's why cryptographers and cybersecurity experts always have to come up with new ways to protect your information. And most of these ways are following kind of the same trend. They're looking for faster computers, better computers, quantum computers, computers that can generate trillions more key combinations than before. And I think that this is the future of cryptography, but it's not the only future. I'd like to venture a bold idea that perhaps the future of cryptography lies not only in computers, but also in art. To do that, I'd like to show you something called an ambigram. An ambigram is a word that can be interpreted from multiple different perspectives. This is an ambigram that I drew on my own a few weeks ago. It says motion. But if you turn it upside down, you can also see that it still says motion. If you didn't catch that, here is it upside down and normally. So this ambigram um, is not the first one that I've ever seen. But I actually discovered ambigrams a few months ago. And I was inspired by the work of the artist John Langdon, who creates ambigrams that are much more professional than these. But throughout the last few months, I've been studying ambigrams, and I've found three really important observations that I want to share for, with you today that will hopefully change your definition of what it is to be innovative in the field of cryptography. So here is another ambigram, and this one says victory. It's also one that I designed. But then when you turn it upside down, it actually says defeat, which is the complete opposite of victory. And this brings me to my first observation, which is that ambigrams are cryptographic. They hide secret messages. In fact, ambigrams are actually more than cryptographic. They're steganographic. And if you didn't know, steganography is a type of cryptography that itself is hidden, which means that when you look at something, not only is there a secret message, but you can't actually tell that there is a secret message. If I walked up to you in school or in the workplace and I handed you a note, and if it was in the Caesar Shift cipher, you would clearly be able to tell that it was encrypted because it would just be a jumble of letters and you would know that this doesn't make sense and that there has to be another message. But if I walk up to you and I hand you a note that says victory, you might think to yourself, huh, that's a weird font. It's kind of sloppy, but it clearly says victory. When in fact it doesn't, it says defeat and there are two messages that you don't see. And I think this is fascinating. 
So my first observation was that this is cryptographic, but it kind of looks different than the type of cryptography we're used to in modern day, which looks more like this. And the second observation I have is that computers can't interpret these kinds of ambigrams. If you look at this letter here, so this is something that I use to represent both C and T, but down here it also represents A. And if a computer looks like this, it doesn't know whether this is C, T, maybe it could be like a weird H, or a C and an I with a dash through it, or if this is some kind of new letter that it doesn't know yet. Because the letters that I draw with these kind of handwritten, sketchy fonts aren't the kinds of letters that computers are necessarily used to interpreting. Which means that it's really interesting that most of the industry in cryptography is focused on the kind of cryptography you see to the right, which is binary code and things that are highly mathematical, highly complex, that rely a lot on prime numbers and the generation of trillions of different numbers to encrypt your information. And all of that relies on computers, and very little of it relies on humans. Whereas this kind of cryptography, which is ambigrams, cannot only not be broken by computers, but it also cannot be created by them. Sure, you can go online and find ambigram generators that generally just splice different letters together, but it's never going to be as readable and as easy to access as the kinds of ambigrams that humans themselves can create. And this brings me to my third observation, which is that ambigrams have a boundless potential that is not being recognized currently. I believe that everyone can learn how to draw an ambigram because over the course of the past few months, it's been pretty easy for me to learn how to do it. I started with very simple words like mom and wow that were kind of natural ambigrams, but now I can draw up to like phrases that are almost as long as sentences that I can write forwards and backwards and can say different things. I want you to imagine a world where everyone had this opportunity and everyone had this skill. What would our world look like if every single person could write two things at once? It kind of sounds like a superpower. What if children learned this when they went to school, just like they learned how to write in cursive or write in a different language. I think that this will significantly change how we communicate with people. Because if I hand you a note and it says, hi, how are you today? And you turn it upside down and it says, will you meet me at the office at noon? There are lots of different meanings that are flying around there. And maybe you don't know which one to trust. Which one do you listen to? How do you respond? What if you use a kind of ambigram that can not only transfer two meetings, but can transfer three or even four? I believe that these are questions that need to be answered. But they cannot be answered if we hold on to the assumption that the only way to innovate, especially in a field like cryptography, is through technology. Because while technology may be great, it's not the only path towards a solution. And I think that if we rely on the idea that there's only one path towards a solution, and we only rely on the idea that computerization and digitization are how we get where we need to go, then we're going to miss some of the most mind-blowing and amazing discoveries like ambigrams. So I encourage you to divert from the path. Don't always go towards the most common solution. Look for new discoveries that might not seem like they make sense. When you find those discoveries, look really deep into them and see if they're, if they're revolutionary and if they go against everything you've thought because they might just be powerful enough to change the world. And when you find those discoveries, look very carefully and make sure to turn them upside down. Thank you.